What's going on everyone? Thank you for tuning back in. Today's video comes to you from Greendale Golf Course. This is located in Alexandria, Virginia, and it's legitimately like four minutes from my house. Technically, it should be my home course, but I guess just between us, the viewers and myself, I really don't like this course. It's always in poor shape. Um, the greens are just, I don't know what the hell they're cut to, but you could take a driver off the deck and it would still not roll, not exaggerating. You might even see that. But I wanted to do a video around course management as well as just course knowledge and how important that is to scoring well. I don't think it's a surprise when you see pro players, they'll do practice rounds. A big part of why they do that is to understand how certain holes may play long or short, where the misses are, how are the greens rolling. And so the point of this video is I wanna pass on some knowledge and I don't think I know it all, but I think a reason why I am able to keep a decent handicap in the single digits is because I think I actually manage courses pretty well. So let's break down hole one and why knowing the course is so important. Anyone who's never played this, their immediate thought is, oh, perfect, it fades right, I can play a fade and I'll be in position A, no problem. But the risk and reward to that is just not worth it in my opinion. You'll notice all on the far right hand side, it's just trees and crap. You're basically OB. There's no point in doing that. You'll notice my target zone green area. If you can get a ball there or even hit it long past that, you're now in the rougher fairway of hole two, aka completely fine, no trouble, still in play. So yes, while we'd love to go for position A and try and cheat it, maybe go over the trees, all you have to do is just line up, aim for where there's no trouble, and take the OB right out of play. Last but not least, you should know your shot shape. If you play a fade, then you should set up more closer to the right side of the tee box where I just indicated there, and you should try to aim for the target zone, really taking the OB out of play. So I have been playing a draw lately, and so my line is personally the tree line on the right, and I want to draw it back over into the safe zone, avoiding the OB. So going into shot two, one thing that I know playing this course that I've learned is do not play the number on this pin. For some reason, it plays extra long. I think it's elevated, but let's take a look at this shot. So you have sand to the left, sand to the right. All the trouble is to the right. It's not OB necessarily, but it's a downhill lie, a lot of rough. So my thought is always go long. There's nothing back there other than some rough. You're, you're completely fine. And then if you miss long and left, which for me, luckily I do a snap hook or a draw, typically is my miss. So that's going to be my thought for this shot. And this course doesn't have a driving range. So you're gonna notice here that I actually miss really short. I took about 15 yards extra club. I don't think I was warm yet. It was a little cold. So again, you can plan for the best, but you still need to execute. And the last piece of advice I have for course management is don't three putt. God, you suck, Mark. So hole two is a par five and it's all downhill. If you remember from the first hole, I told you that it goes a little long and plays up. You now benefit from the downhill on this hole. So ideally, position A is right down the middle. If you can hit a straight shot, kudos to you. But if you can't, what I'd recommend is stay completely away from the far right side. It's all trees and OB. And look at the target zone. So that's in between hole one and two, but it's completely safe. So for me personally, I actually pick the tree line on the right as my line. And because I'm playing a draw, if it draws back to position A, great. But if it's more of a snap hook and I'm in my target zone area, well, guess what? I'm still safe. Uh, luckily, the driver is feeling pretty good. I hit it pretty damn good, actually, and we're right down the middle. So for this upcoming shot, I feel like most high handicappers, recreational players, they just automatically grab three wood and say, let's get home in two. I had about 222 25 left to the pin, which is exactly what my three wood goes. I think I hit it about 230. However, it's not worth the risk reward. OB left, OB right. There's a bunker to the left as well. And for those people who can hit a straight shot and get to the flag, then great, hit a straight shot. My advice is more for the high handicappers and people like myself who can't control their longer irons and woods and how to play it safe and save some strokes. So I decide to take my three hybrid, which is about my 200 club, which I control very nicely. I have my start line at the trees knowing I play a draw. It should drop around the target zone, but best case scenario, close to the pin. 
So for most average people like myself who are shorter hitters, you want to play a par 5 to get to ideally a scoring club like your sand wedge and put it in close. Not much thinking here other than let's not sail it long, which I don't. And then obviously you just have to make a putt. Um, notice how hard I hit that, by the way, barely went anywhere. Shows how slow the greens are. First par three today, and this one I think was playing around 175, 180. So you can see on the screen that there's pretty obvious OB areas to the left. Now the trees on the right aren't OB, it's just not a good place to be. And then there's actually a lot of trouble and crap long. So you'll notice my target zone's actually a little bigger than usual, but it's where you want to be if you want to play this safe. So since I hit a draw, my start line is the target zone and I want it to draw towards the flag. If for some reason I hit it straight, I'm still safe. But if someone were to play a fade, I'd actually recommend maybe you start it in between the sand and the pin. If you hit a straight ball, you're on. But if you hit a fade, then you're still in that safe target zone I told you about. And then the last thought that I have is I know from experience that this green, you do not want to be at the top of it. It's kind of like a downhillish type slope. You want to stay short and go up. So I actually decide to take less club. This would probably be a full five iron for me. I decide to go six iron. And if I hit it pure and it's the number, great. But if I'm where I think it should be, I still should have a putt. Luckily, I hit it pin high to the right. And then no course management needed here. Just my big saying, never leave a birdie short. Give it a run. Oopsies. Now that you have the hang of things, I'll probably get back to just playing and stop with the graphics. This hole, it's really interesting. It's like a 90 degree dog leg left. So you actually want to lay up. I tried to take a cheating line, but I end up pretty good in the fairway. And now this is, again, imagine a 90 degree turn left and that's where the pin is. So we just kind of turn the camera that way. And then for this hole in particular, there isn't too much trouble. Everything's right in front of you. There's a bunker, a bunch of trees. Uh, luckily, I had a wedge in. I left it short, but not too bad in terms of cleaning up with a two putt. And then the next hole coming up here, again, some of these muni courses, there isn't much to it in terms of course management. Look at that. It's just straight. Uh, I guess hit a straight ball if you can. Uh, that one was kind of a mishit for me. I was actually trying to do kind of a push draw where I wanted to start on the right and draw back. It ended up being just a straight draw, but it's hung on. And then my biggest piece of advice for those players that are in the sand or the bunker, um, this is something Golf Sidekick, if you're listening, I love you, you inspired me, uh, but Golf Sidekick has a saying, just get it on the green. For those that have bunker shots and aren't comfortable with them, don't overthink it, stop trying to get it close, just get it out and put it on the green. Okay, I lied. I said I'd stop with the graphics, but I had to do it for this hole because it's actually a really cool and fun hole, as you can see. Extremely challenging. There's a lot of water you have to carry, OB left and right. There's a sand bunker to the left. They actually had a sand bunker to the right where the target zone is, but they removed it. So if you were playing this hole with me right now, I'd ask you, what's your typical miss? What's your normal shot shape? What do you feel comfortable with? If you're playing a fade, I'd probably tell you to start it at the flag or left green, and if it cuts over, you're still safe. If you play a draw like myself, I would probably start it at the target zone, and then hopefully it draws back onto the green. But the number one thing that I want people to take away, and I think this is so important for most recreational or players that are starting out, you need to know your carry distance. The flag I think today was playing around 180, 175, 180 but I was actually just playing what club do I need to carry all the crap and get it onto the green. Because another miss that isn't listed there is short of the green where there's some runway to get up as long as you carry the water. And luckily I hit a pretty good shot. And by pretty good, I actually thought I almost ace cammed it. Uh, you can see it rolled past the pin. My divot was about two feet in front, but you can see it's actually a bad miss because this is a completely sloping up green. I actually had a downhill putt I'm lucky the greens are slow and it saved me. Hole seven is a short par five and it's actually one of my personal favorite holes. And that's because it's the first time I've ever had an eagle attempt. And notice how I used the word attempt. I clearly missed and didn't have the eagle. But even for a short hitter like myself, you can hit driver, hybrid driver, maybe four or five iron and be in pretty good shape to reach the green. The one kind of tricky part of this hole is this shot right here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a creek kind of protecting this second shot. Makes you think, should you lay up or play it safe? 
I decided to go for it with a three wood. I was feeling pretty confident. Um, luckily it hung on. I pushed my three wood. It rolled over the cart path and into the leaves right there. I was able to find it and punch it out. Uh, because it's such a short hole, you can see that I wasn't in too much danger or trouble with just a punch wedge on. Uh, and I still had to look for birdie, which I do leave short. So again, for course management purposes, it all goes out the window. You just got to make a putt. Go work on your putter. All right, another short par three. This one was playing, I think it was around 148, 150-ish. But if you remember from my comments earlier, that all goes out the window. You need to know the carry distance, especially when there's water and a lot of trouble in front of you. I think just knowing your carry distances alone, that will save you if you're listening and don't know that. If you find that out, I promise that will save you anywhere from three to five strokes around. So again, do not play the number. Know your carry distances and what will happen if you land it in a certain spot or the target zones is what I like to call them. And then this last hole, it's a complete dogleg right. It's kind of a sucker's uh, drive. It makes you or wants you to hit a fade. Uh, the secret is you actually just want to go straight. If you hit a straight ball, you actually have a much better look into the green. And then don't have that approach like I did where I kind of shank pulled it left. Luckily, I had a pretty good chip on to try and save. And I don't. But not mad at a bogey here after a bad shank for a pretty decent nine. So I hope you enjoyed this video. A little different from my others, but on the screen, you can see I put kind of my four big takeaways. If you can follow these rules and keep them in mind in your next round, I promise you that you'll save at least one stroke, if not more. So thanks for tuning in and until next time.